no pressure. No pressure at all. Yeah. I literally fall in the left shower this morning like I need to We can't find the world. You're live? Just, just getting y'all warm up. Yeah. That's weird. I know it. That one changed me, bro. Wow, anyway. Oh, that's so bad. All right, guys, can y'all hear us okay? Everybody let me know if y'all can hear us okay. We're fixing to get started here in about right now. Hey, guys, it's Steve, Doug, and Trevor from PDS Equipment. We're going to go over some... Uh, you be print questions with you. We're going to ask each other questions, but if y'all got questions, y'all want to talk about, feel free to, to reach out to us. Uh, post them in the comments. We'll do the best we can to follow them. Uh, Tommy might be, you might want to get on the computer and just watch the Facebook in case the questions come up that we can't see. Let me, uh, I'll give you anonymous. Yep. Yeah. You got it. Let's get this set up. It's comments. Yeah, there we go. All right, guys. Uh, we're gonna start out asking each other a couple questions. So uh, let me know if y'all can hear it okay. Somebody chime in. Let me go here. Comments. Screen yard. All right, guys. Got a couple uh, questions for this you right here, Trev. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, first question we're going to ask until y'all get rolling in and ask your own questions. Uh, this, is, this is yours. All right. This is for Trevor. So, what are the common products you see people print on that are profitable and easy to print on? So first off, uh, welcome everybody. Um, a lot of the stuff, you know, we see a lot of stuff people print on a lot of different industries. This is when we go to trade shows, when we meet a lot of people, it's probably the most common question we get is what do you print on? How can I make money? Um, I think it, it really depends on your market, what your current customer base is. Uh, but if you're starting from the ground up, there's always a few things that I'll kind of lead with that everybody needs. So one thing that we saw in 2023 uh, that we, we did show this at UB Energized is the hat patches. Uh, it's a phenomenal product that we can put on our flatbeds either by doing a flat sheet or we can have pre-cuts. So mm -hmm. for people out there that don't have lasers, there's a lot of people to do. So we even subbed it out to some of our customers. We don't have lasers and, and we wanted custom fish patches and things. Yeah, so custom shapes, but every trophy shop has a laser and every town has a trophy shop. So Correct. if somebody would have a laser, that's not what But you can do the uh, special shapes instead of round and squares, that helps you separate yourself from the providers that don't have lasers. You know, if you can cut your own shape, uh, you know, the shape of the state, 
the shape of a fish, a golf ball, whatever, uh, that's going to help you separate yourself from, from other people. But uh, the hat patches, you know, we're a Stalls dealer. Stalls makes a great hot tronics hat press. If you'd energize, I don't know how many we sold, but it was a bunch of them. Uh, so that's definitely a, a great application that everybody likes hats. Um, and when you can make your own custom hats, that's pretty, it's pretty easy money. And on the UV machines, you can print 20 or 30 hat patches every five minutes. And then to put them in the laser, it takes another five or six minutes to cut them out. Then you got a little time on the hat press. Uh, you, you're doing great. Well, and everyone be a different image. Yeah. Right. Everyone be a different image. So if you take in 30 orders that day and the orders are one, you're going to produce those 30 in less than five minutes as far as the print time goes. So that's a, that's easy production, a good margin. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy to scale uh, locally, right? That's a big thing. Like, yeah. It's, there's a wide demand for people wanting hats, whether it be the corporate or whether it be ball teams. I mean, anything. That's on YouTube, not Facebook. better equipment guys than we are streamers so uh y'all work with us is the facebook brian is it going up it's fine all right we're just buffering no, yeah uh try on this facebook live on events on uv enter on the uv anonymous i had an event scheduled for me on go live uh, awesome All right, well, we're gonna keep rolling. We're recording this. So even if it don't show up on your platform, uh, we're recording it, so we'll be able to upload it so you guys don't miss anything. So uh, we're gonna get better at this eventually. Good? Yeah, yeah. All right, so this is a question for Doug. You know, Doug's out. Base camp. This is a question for Doug. You know, he's out on the doing installs, doing a lot of service. So uh, what trends did PDS see in, uh, in 2023? When you was out in shops, what new stuff did you see that's kind of new? And of course, new products equals margin. That means everybody's not doing them. The price hadn't been pushed down to nothing. Uh, so when you get into some new product, it's going to generate a lot, of, a lot of profit. So what's some of the stuff you see, Doug, that you've seen out there that was pretty new and fresh well the hottest the hottest trend for sure that i saw was the handle cups the stainless style cups and of course jds has got their version of that yeah so you know that's going to be readily available for a wholesale person to to put out but you know it's just it's just a really really hot product um you know another one for christmas time that i was seeing quite a bit of was people taking existing toys you know toys that are favorites in the market for a very long time and putting custom images on the toilets. Yeah. Uh, multiple products like that to where, you know, you've already got, if you can find something where you've already got a, a following, you know, somebody's got a, that loves that toy already and the grandparents know they love that toy and they can put a, a family photo on that toy. That goes a, that goes a long way. People pay extra for that. So that's a that's a couple of that's a couple of things I've seen as far as as far as high trends for the year. Something that that the Mamaki is good at. We have a jig print feature that we can set up to print this image, and without doing anything, we just rotate the cup and print right on the handle. Uh, if we have time, we're going to show you guys the jig print function on the machine. If not, we'll record and post it just so you can, guys can see how easy it is to print on the handle 
and have it perfect register every time. Uh, you never see, I've never seen this print on the handle other than when we do it for demos. So if you guys are struggling with how to do this properly, you call us. The Stanley cups are with the handle and everything, they're over five inches tall. So there's a lot of the competitive flatbeds can't print over five inches. So if you're going to be in, if you're going to take advantage of the viral market for the Stanley cups, you're going to need to get one of these Mamakis with the six inch head gap that can do this. So if your machine limits out at five inches, you're limited on a big viral product at the moment that uh, we can help you guys with. All right. Give me one. All right. So this one's for Steve. Uh, who have you seen that's the best fit for UV? Okay. The best fit to add a UV printer, and we look at it a couple ways. We look at who's going to be easier to train, who's going to be the most successful, and uh who's going to get easily financed okay in order to get financed i mean that's the thing about uv printing if you're in the laser market some of these lasers you can get a great laser for you know five to ten maybe 15 grand well a quality uv printer if you you know it's going to be a minimum of 30 grand that's for a really small one this is japanese machines i'm talking you can get chinese printers for a couple thousand dollars but what we're selling is much different. Um, so most of the guys are going to need to get financed for a UV printer. Okay. You need to be, in, it's good to be in business for two years or more. If you're a startup, it's, you still get financed, but it's a little tricky. But uh, who we target as a customer base, we're going after laser companies that own lasers. Um, the reason why is it makes life easy uh, It's training them. And they've got 85 to 90 percent of the tools needed to be successful with UV printer. They understand precision. They understand accuracy. They can cut their own jigs. Uh, they can cut out shapes of products to print on. So if you drop a UV printer into a system laser company, it's like pouring gas on a fire. They uh, they just they do really good with it. And that's that's the kind of people we want to target. We want to help people become successful. And if you've already got a laser and you understand how to do graphic design, you can send files from your computer to the machine. A lot of industries can't do that. We go to some industries where they're uh, airbrushing their products. Well, to take somebody with an airbrush into a digital world of UV printing, it's a longer training cycle. Not that they don't become successful, but it's, it's not in a day or two that they've got it all figured out. We're having to teach them Adobe, Corel, uh, most of your laser guys already know Corel and some of them know Adobe, so that makes it easy to uh, get them up to speed and help them make the payment. Um, so, answer your question, people who own lasers that have business, been in business for a year or two, that's who we target because that's who's the most successful with our machines. Um, so, if you got laser, you know, look look into it. Uh, if, you, if you're just a hobby, you need to go ahead and get your business name get official business because when you go get financed they're going to look back at how long you've been in business if it's less than two years you're going to be a startup and that's going to be a little trickier to get you financed so uh but other than that, you got some questions on youtube i got one that came in uh this one's from one of our our print pros we all know uh oh mr rick nunn big rick woo -woo. Uh, going back to the hat patches, he said, is there a special coating that needs to be printed on top of the hat patches, like clear to protect from the heat? Um, I'll jump in on that one. So from everything we've seen with the 120 ink, we don't have to put any clear coating. It, it, the heat didn't phase it at all. And we, we you know the JDS adhesive back uh, leatherette sticks phenomenally. It doesn't come off. I, I've been wearing a hat for months now that we did at Energize in September and, and the patch is perfect still. Uh, so no coatings, no, you really don't need any primers, anything like that to stick to the leather. And that is one great point is, is the clear coatings allow you to separate your patch from every other patch in the market. It's uh, that spot gloss on certain aspects of the, of the patches is what really makes it pop. So. 
Hopefully that answers your question. Yep. Uh, I'm on this question for both these guys. So they both got a ton of experience out in the real world, uh, servicing, helping customers. So what what have you guys seen would be the best practices to ensure your machine lasts 10 years? Okay. These UV printers, Mamaki UV printers, are engineered and designed to provide 10 years or more of solid production without any major overhauls. Uh, so, Doug, what what have you seen that a that a equipment a UV print guy owner could do to maximize the life of their machine and make it 10 years or more? I I think my answer is going to be a little bit of a surprise to you. If you're, especially with this LD printing going on these days, my answer would be is when you change, if you, say you print acrylic all the time, you've got an expected result of how dirty your machine's going to get. So if you're just printing on flat things all the time, printing on acrylic, you can probably do maintenance once a day. But if it were my machine, that's how I always answer these questions. If this was my machine, what would I do? Okay. If it were my machine, and I had a 7151 and I had three days of long distance printing on say Stanley handle cups. Well, at lunchtime, I'm probably gonna move that carriage down to the maintenance station and take a look under there and see how dirty it's getting. Mm -hmm. If it's getting dirtier than it does when I just print flat acrylic, I'm gonna increase my rate of daily maintenance. Okay, it doesn't take that long to do and it's worth it. It's worth it. Another thing I see get overlooked a lot, like when I go out into the field and I walk in on a machine that has been in service for a couple of years, even the people who do good maintenance often overlook the mist absorption filter. The mist absorption filter is a pretty big deal because as you create overspray, that, that mist absorption filter sucks that up. Once that thing gets clogged, that mist just goes everywhere else. You know, it, it can stick to things, and that's that's not great for your machine at all. You know, of course, fixtures are a big deal, and it doesn't have to be fancy. It can be a block of wood. So you want to, you know, that if you put a block of wood out next to a canvas, for example, you know, if you need to bleed off that canvas, that's perfectly fine. Bleed off the canvas. But put a block of wood there, and that block of wood will do a couple of things. It'll catch the ink mist, okay? And it'll help control that light. That that's a that's a big deal. So obviously your daily maintenance and really, man, just paying close attention to your machine. You know, if you're doing something you don't normally do, bring that head out over the maintenance station. Bring it out over the maintenance station and take a look. Just take a look and see what's going on. And you know, if you ever have a question about, you know, should I do this more often, you know, we're always available. All our cell phone numbers are easy to find. You know, you can always call us and ask. Um, I get nozzle wash a lot. Nozzle wash is a, a question I get a lot. For people who don't know, if you're, if you're, you know, we probably got a lot of people here that are, yeah, never don't know what you'd be printing. So, you know, nozzle wash is a process to where that, that printhead can sit in the cleaning solution. And people often ask me, when should I do it? And I say, well, a good rule of thumb is probably once a week. But again, what what are you using your machine for? How far do you run it? What products are you printing on? Are those do those products do some products reflect more light than others? So my short answer to that is pay close attention to your machine. That's my short answer. Yeah. And, and if you need to increase your if you need to, you know, do your daily maintenance twice a day, do that. I would encourage that, especially with this LD, you know, these these extreme long distance printing, you know, that's going to be, I think that's going to be a useful thing. As I go forward into 2024 and I train people on the long distance printing, that's what I'm going to start including for myself, my training for 2024. You might need to make this today. Yeah, because especially if you're printing on white cups, white cups, you know, things that reflect more light, you know, um, it's a, uh, that, that would be my advice. Cool. Jerry, what do you think? You've seen got a lot of machines, and yeah. we've got a lot of, and they people keep buying them. It's not because their machines are broke; it's because they're they're getting busy and they need more machines. So uh, some of these machines are out in the field now; they're ten or twelve years old, yeah. still running. So how do they 
How do they make it last that long? Well, to touch base off of Doug, you know, a lot, I'll start from the very beginning, the new customers, right? So all my customers that have bought within the past six months, right? They, they get in the UV, they start making money, they start printing on everything because they can't. I mean, I would prefer even 90 days after you've bought a machine from us, call me, send me pictures of stuff you're doing. Let me know. That's what we're here for. At, you know, ask us, am I printing this correctly? Am I, am I bleeding off the edge? What do I need to do? Is this okay? Right? Like that's what we're here for to help you with all that stuff. So kind of to set yourself up to make the machine last 10 years, I think it's important you set up in the beginning properly right. like he talked and he you touched on do a lot of damage in the first, in the year. first three months you only yeah. have seen doing silly stuff exactly and, and i get you got a test and doing a one-off here and there we do it here at the office, yeah. at the office in the shop a lot where we'll slap glass on here and y'all see some of the stuff we may do on youtube for doing a one-off that's not always necessary we don't necessarily recommend running products like that in production setting yeah that's to show you guys you have the ability yeah so it starts from early on and you own the, the, the machine and we're here to help make sure everything is being ran properly what i mean there there's there's two things that kill uv printers okay you got light reflection and you have overspray and they work together if you're producing overspray and it's getting on the bottom of the print carriage on the print heads on the lamps and the light is reflecting back up into the print head, you're curing ink on the bottom of your print head. So anything you guys can do to absorb the light, not reflect it, and eliminate overspray, that's the two things that are gonna allow you to have a solid 10 years of production. I'm talking multiple shift production, okay? To where you, you can depend on this machine to pay for itself in 10 years, probably 20 times. Okay, these are money makers. If you just run them and you understand how to take care of them, it's not like most of the printers were seven months down the road, you're replacing print heads and the, you know, these print heads aren't consumables. They're made to last a long time. We've got multiple machines out in the field, 10 and 12 years old, still running original print heads. Okay, but that's because the person who's doing the maintenance might be the same guy paying, paying the payment. Um, which means they're not skipping their maintenance, they're doing it properly, they're not, they're not trying to buy cheap cleaning fluid, they're getting the proper machines. You know, All Japanese equipment, whether it's Lexus, Toyota, Mamaki, if you service it like it's supposed to be serviced, it's probably not gonna mess up, okay? If you start printing stuff that's questionable and, and skipping maintenance cycles, that's when you can start to have some downtime, but uh, we wanna help you eliminate the downtime by running your machine properly um, i got a question for you all right the industrial printing you know as far as industrial printing out there in the world you know not not doing not customizing anything but doing industrial applications probably what's your favorite industrial application that you see out there uh i mean the funnest one is just printing on the the, the gun magazines you know because they can get creative and it's personalized but it's still industrial uh, you know, aerospace applications where you get you're helping the customer print products that are going in airplanes and space shuttles. Uh, I mean, we've got some customers that are they're doing all that stuff, and they don't have time to mess around with the a questionable printer. These guys got to produce products. They got to have the proper ink. They got to have durability. They got to have heat and humidity testing. They got to have flame toxicity testing. Um, and that's the kind of stuff we help people through the process. But the industrial applications, if y'all see our logo on our shirt, the IP is highlighted. That's because we specialize in the industrial print sector. Um, you know, next, what, two weeks now, two weeks from now, we'll be in Vegas at the SHOT Show. It's guns, ammunition, target practice, uh, all kinds of equipment that's in the gun industry. It's, you know, it's one of our favorite shows here because we get to, you know, be around a lot of guns and shooting. It's a, it's a great place to be. Uh, but the industrial printing companies, you guys need to go after them. Uh, you got any big manufacturing 
facility around your place, you need to go poke around, make an appointment, see how you can help them. If you get, if you get an appointment with them, go in, go in with some samples. It could be the business card. It could be anything. Print on a piece of metal because there's a good chance they're already sending this stuff out to somebody or doing it in the house with an older process. It could be silk screening or etching. If you can go in, you pad printing. That's the biggest that we're. If you can go in and improve their efficiency and at the same time save them some money, you're going to be able to help them uh, with your UV printer targeting industrial print accounts. You know, they're not going to call you because they don't know you do it. You need to go after them and uh, just make it a goal in 2024 to try to pick up the industrial print customers. These guys, they got money. You know, they're, it's not onesie twosie. They want you to print, you know, 50 uh, panel on a panel per machine. You know, it's a great application. Uh, so if you're not going out in the industrial print market, it'd probably be a good time to uh, set a goal. Uh, Jeff Morgan asks, what's the update on our DTF film? Let's talk about it. Yeah, yep, the DTF film, uh, we tested it, and it's it's okay. Now, after a while, you know, we tested it. It looks great on a bunch of stuff, but we had some, some products that started cracking and flaking. Um, so we, you know, we wasn't comfortable promoting it 100% without proper testing. And we've been busy, uh, so we haven't spent a whole lot of time testing. I know there's some out there, but it's very hit and miss on the results that we was getting. I mean, everything's got to be perfect. You got to heat it to a certain temperature. Uh, I mean, there is some applications great for it, but I guess I need you guys to help us test it because we haven't spent enough time testing it to feel comfortable enough to promote it to you guys. Uh, you know, we would hate for to promote it to you and you sell 500 products and then, you know, six months later, you have to take them all back. So if y'all got any suggestions, we'd love to hear about it. Uh, but so far on the UV DTF film on the flatbeds, we haven't fully we haven't fully behind it this yet. All right, I got a uh, I got a question for Trail. Uh, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of cities and towns out there. Some of them are very remote. Uh, so, Trevor, how how can you be successful in a small town with a very limited population? So, we, he, Steve kind of touched base on this a little bit ago. Uh, this is another common one that people that are looking to get into UV, they're, they're either working from their house, their garage, or they have a small storefront, and they they want to get into UV because of all the opportunity, but they're, they're scared of making the investment and, and being profitable with the machine when they're in a small town of 500, 800 people. And we install a ton of equipment in those type places. Yeah. I would say majority of the machines we sell are in smaller towns because uh, that's where people are looking to create their own businesses and really you know, thrive but things that i see that customers are, are doing well kind of go back to that industrial talk that steve was just talking about is is get out and and find local companies around you i would be looking to just be to be stuck you know the, the businesses are willing to, to pay your margins. They're not going to beat you up on price. They're going to want 50 of something like he They're looking for a solution. Correct. You know, the, the people that are coming into your storefronts that are want one or two, it's really tough to scale and, and do large orders that way. So if you're in a small town, there's going to be a rep, some kind of industrial, some kind of type of corporate businesses around you. Go after people that are making money in larger businesses. And one example I, I, I saw this year was a small town company that they had gas line 
uh, it was gas pipe, had to go into uh, hospitals and these large industrial buildings. And every 200 feet, that pipe has to be marked with a tag. And it has to be a yellow tag. And they have to print on, it has to be a metal tag. So every 200 feet in this building, they had to print a two by eight. Well, that one building needed 800 tags. Yeah. That customer charged $10 a tag. That was an $8,000 job yeah. that they were able to pay months and months and months. You know, their first year of owning the printer, they did it in a week, in a week's worth of, or a couple of days worth of printing. Yeah. And now everything else is profitable. So the little things like that, that you could be the best tag printer in america in high high margins right well, that's a, and I, I, I would consider that an industrial application correct I mean, that would fall into that category correct. i think that gets overlooked a lot the, correct. the industrial applications yeah and i think the small town people have to answer a question are you going to be e-commerce or are you going to do straight line sales? i think that's the question you have to answer you know because we have a machine in a small town very very small town in iowa and it was just a trophy shop. We see that quite a bit. For me personally, what I've seen the people who buy UV printers that are in a small town, a lot of times have been a trophy shop for me. Mm -hmm. So that particular trophy shop had, before they got the printer, had gotten a little bit of traction on Etsy, a little bit, okay? When they got the UV printer, within eight months, their, their Etsy store surpass the income of the trophy shop itself within eight months of owning the printer so so that's the you know that is one of the powers of etsy and you know etsy's not not a real complicated platform to to get on so yeah i think that's a i think that's a big question to answer straight line sales or and straight line sales to get like name badges for example you really can't go i think one of the beauty of name badges is you you can't go wrong with your sales method. You can do it e-commerce and you can do it straight line sales. We've seen it work both ways. Yeah. You know, we've seen companies make that work both ways. And I'm not sure if y'all put it in the calculator or not. Uh, the name badge market is crazy margins, okay? And their personal is if you're doing name badges on a laser now, uh, you know, you're probably getting anywhere from six to fifteen dollars a badge. Well, when you start doing a UV printing, you're going to be able to do multiple colors. You're going to be able to add textures. You're going to be able to do variable data on on our sixty forty two, like a one by three name badge. I think you're doing eighty six eighty six name badges every six minutes. Okay, so eighty six dollars or eighty six badges. You're going to have around 30 cents cost in each name badge. That's the badge and the magnet. And then even if you read up, retail that for $10 a badge, uh, you just about made your whole month's payment in one six minute bed run of name badges. Okay. So if you're not doing name badges as a UV printer, you're missing out on the highest margin product there, you know. I don't have my calculator there, but if you're getting 10 bucks a badge and it's 30 cents, I think that's well over 25, 100% margin. You know, most companies are good with 35 and 40% margin, but you know, why not get 25, 100% margin? It's out there. If you go, you know, like we say, you just got to go get it. First, you got to decide what you want, and then you got to put a, a plan in place to go after it. Like, I mean, this live we're doing here this is not something that's popped up we've been planning a little bit we're going to get better but you know we teach ourselves you don't wait on stuff to happen you you get up you put your socks on you go get it socks and you start making stuff happen guys it's you uv printer guys y'all got an extreme advantage and and i'm not sure all of you know how good of an advantage you guys have over all the other print processes in the world i mean you don't have any film you don't have any make ready you just put the file in and print and it's full color you know and this stuff's four to five times faster than a laser and the products you're producing are more valuable uh so 
this is an in, supposed to be an encouraging discussion for you guys to uh, don't wait on stuff to happen, guys. We need you to hustle. We got some more questions coming in. Yeah. Um, this came in from uh, Nikki and Allison Bowers. This is What's a up, great Nikki? point. Uh, don't be afraid to tell people what you do. We live in a small town, and business comes from every direction when they find out what you're capable of. I mean, that's get out there. That's that's a great point. Let's get the word. Yeah, get the yeah. Um, and our our friend Danny, he just chimed in. What's up, Danny? Yeah, Danny. We will have uh, some lenticular stuff at Energize. It's up to you guys. I mean, the day that does a lenticular training, this is this is how he pays his bills, teaching people how to do lenticular training. If enough of you guys are interested in signing up for a class at Energize, we can have a discounted rate. Now, Dave doesn't work for PDS. He's a... He's his own company. We allow him to use our equipment and our facility to provide his services. We don't, you know, we don't charge him for none of that. We're just trying to help him get, get going. So if enough of you guys are interested in the lenticular training at Energize, it would probably have to be a day before or a day after because it it's probably, I'd say at least a four or five hour class to uh you know to really get it down we won't we won't have hands-on training for everybody so danny if you find three or four other people that are interested in the new zealand ticker class we'd love to get a spot set up inside the west end where you guys can go in there and you know learn and test and we can even have a machine down in one of the conference rooms so y'all can line up the lens and do the printing yourself be separate from be separate from the main floor so you got yeah. the wide space yeah, yeah. so uh, how many people have come through here uh i think he's had four classes four different classes for them to take here and they've been three or four people per class uh we try to keep it small so everybody has time to do the hands-on uh you know the hands-on training everybody gets to do their own files they get to do their own printing on the machine. If the classes are much bigger than four or five people, you really don't get the hands-on stuff. So you gotta what what's lenticular? In case there's somebody watching yep. who don't know. If if you're not familiar with lenticular, uh yeah, you know, got a, we got a little bit of a lag on our screen. Not <laughs> sure if if you're gonna be able to see it. But it changes in just see if you got flip with the uh yeah. Yeah, flip This is a cool one here. All right. If you look at this one. The Energize logo in the middle is static, but as, as I rotate it, as I rotate it, the flames are moving. You know, it's like it's on fire. It's kind of subtle, but there's three types of lenticular. You have the uh, animation, which is like this, and you have the flip lenticular and the 3D. The 3D doesn't show very well on the camera but the flip does y'all find one well i got this one here didn't didn't throw tech got some of that for us again yeah and it cuts great on the laser right. so let's talk let's talk about markets and stuff with this stuff right like what we're what are, i think's interesting trophy and awards yeah i think trophy and awards is probably mm -hmm. Especially if you can lay yourself into the shape of a football, a baseball, basketball. Correct. You know, if you can do that. I mean, you could have a picture of a kid standing at, standing at home plate with his bat up, and as you rotate it, he's in his swing. Correct. You know, I, you can do action shots, literally action shots. And the before and after is what I've seen that's been the greatest. Yeah. Uh, of, of the little Johnny holding his bat, and then his senior year, 
he's holding it back too. Oh, yeah, that's all. So, so just being able to see. Christmas order. Exactly. Christmas order. That's great. Christ, yeah. You walk past the tree, right. and, and and Johnny's a kid, and then he's grown up, right? That's sentimental value. That's probably a you can, $60 order. You can see one every year and, like, take a picture at the beginning of the year, at the end of the year. Correct. And, and you would get an order every year, and as you walk by the Christmas tree, it's like you're seeing these kids grow up. Yeah, no, it's yeah. that's the market I see that people are willing to pay. You're going to get, you know, mom and dad's buying it, and then the grandparents, and you're just going to sell four or five of them. It's some of the... I think Christmas ornaments, I don't think people, I think they kind of feel like it's saturated sometimes. Yeah. I don't think they realize how big and huge Christmas ornaments are. All right. Man, we got uh, another question coming in from uh, a guy, Chris Knuckles. He hadn't even received his machine yet, but he's already planning on markets that he's going to go after. Markets he's already doing, but he's going to take the UV printer into it and, and just turn it up a notch. Uh, he says, hey guys, among other things, we make candles and want to use the printer for printing the label directly on the candle jars. What is the largest diameter I could print on without the rotary? Uh, on the 71, well, 6042 or 7151, six inch is the maximum head gap. So if you're not using the rotary, you'll be able to take full advantage of the six inch head gap. Uh, but you, you know, you guys that are into candles, we can print on the wax of the candle too. Uh, so if you're printing the candles and you're making them and you want to put images on the candles, we can print on the jar or the uh, or the wax candle itself. You know, I've seen some people go to a Hobby Lobby. There's square candles that you can get to have the uh, lights. You know, they got lights in them. It looks like they're candles, but it's just lights. But I printed our last name on the candle put it on the mantle uh and it's a wax candle and it worked out really good so uh that's the kind of stuff that you know if you go to that you're personalizing that kind of stuff that's a great way to generate a lot of money and some people are passionate about making candles so they're able to take their passion of being a, a maker and now they're able to personalize it and increase their margins not only make money but they're making money on stuff they enjoy doing that's very important a lot of people are are doing stuff that's not emotional and that's fine but when you're when you get to an industry that you're passionate about uh, that's a lot of fun you know you're still making money but you're doing it in an industry that you've been a part of for a long time whether it's baseball uh hunting fishing uh you know monograms whatever you're passionate about you can take this machine and plug it in you already know the language you already know who's who in the, in the industry it allows for you quick market share when you're going after industry that you're very familiar with it's uh it's fun stuff on the on the candles i have a, i have an account that bought a 7151 and that's what they started out doing candles. They build their own candles, put the wicks in them. They did the whole night. Make the wax. Yeah, see what you, you know, so then she told me, she said, that's how we market it. We market the candles on Instagram. She said, but once we get them to our Etsy store, it's all about trying to sell them, you know, and put together a nice package. They could get a candle on the cutting table. Yeah. And, you know, so she said, all right, among these, to, well, you know, once we get them to our stores, to upsell them in the package for candles, get them. Yeah. The candles, get them. People love candles, but once they get there, they see they can buy a gift box or something like that. I mean, they're printing your box, and every item that goes in the box, they're using their, their laser and their UV printer to print it off to do it all in the dollar. And we got a question here Jeff McCannis. Steve, he wants to know the latest on the new cylinder printing attachment of All right, uh, we haven't received the full pricing on it yet, okay. Uh, Let's see. Right. All right, I like it. The new kebab, it's going to be better on tapered cups. I mean, we had some extreme tapered cups at Energize uh, that they was testing on. They did a great job. Uh, I'm full wrapped. So we haven't received ours yet enough to test it. If, if we ever sell or promote a product, it's not just because they built it and we test everything. I mean, we got people. 
want to buy machines from us right now until we run it through our service department and print on it and you know run it through spaces we don't deliver any machine that don't come through here and we got to give it a you know at least a couple of weeks of run time just to make sure when we install it in your place it's ready to roll uh not to say machines can't have trouble once you install them but we try to eliminate that as much as possible just by you know taking the time to to make sure you guys are prepared um you know the jfx 600 you know we've been testing it a while and it's a it's a great machine now when they come out there are some field change orders and some updates you expect that on a new machine but uh you know we believe in the Mike's engineering team no matter what they send out it's going to be good uh but we still want to test it for ourselves uh we got another question from nicole till uh, how big can you do on the 6042 with similar application with the can all of our ujf series printers go up to six inches uh that's the super gap. yeah the super gap you know that would go 12 and a half inches so it's a uh you know a lot of options a six inch gap it's nice the the 6042 you have to remove the table spacers to get the six inch gap the 7151 it moves the whole six inches without any operator intervention um, so i'm going to check a couple of other platforms see if y'all got any more questions uh we got a couple shows coming up guys that we want to make sure you know about we'll be at the shot show uh you know that's all firearm and gun related you know you, that's not open to the public you got to be part of the industry to be at that show one of our favorite shows of the year is uh coming up in las vegas in february it's the apa show that's the wards and person relations show uh, it's at the paris hotel that's probably the largest concentration of our customers uh of any show we go to uh anytime we have a show like that with our customers we definitely host our own customer appreciation events uh you guys that have bought from us you guys that are looking to buy from us you guys are all welcome to that event this year it's going to be on the the rooftop of the palms hotel there's a, a rooftop bar up there called the ghost bar that's a beautiful venue uh it's going to be a, a smaller crowd but it's going to be our crew that uh that believes in us and our crew that we believe in um you know we do this kind of stuff guys because we believe in we believe that if you get the right training the right equipment the right marketing encouragement you're going to be successful in the uv print industry uh so anything you guys need from us you be sure and call us so we can uh help you guys i'm sure you got all our cell phone numbers there they're available all the time um so let's have some more questions y'all got any i got one for you too so somebody that has a laser and they get a uv printer what kind of work do you see the printer steal from the laser well it it's it's a bunch it's a bunch it's a bunch uh i mean i've got laser guys that are doing tumblers they're doing and they're charging 30 40 bucks a tumbler uh of course the lasers aren't as fast as the as a uv printer so and it's on a single color so when you're doing, doing color on a tumbler you can still charge that 35 to 50 bucks for personalized tumblers but you're going to do it four times faster much faster. much faster and it's full color so you're able to hold your margin especially if you're competing against somebody that only has a laser um, i think all uv print companies need a laser that's a laser and uv printer are like a perfect match uh, so you know if, if you got the tumblers that's great just the name badges a lot of laser guys are doing name badges uh if i owned a uv printer that's probably all I, all I would do with name badges and you just that uv printer is going to screen pass that rastering process it takes that's a timely process to sit and, and raster an image, etch away that material, right. right? So, like just cutting acrylic and doing the frosted look yeah. with a nice laser look, you could do a low density white. That's what I see a lot that's of people. That's that's and it's see, it's yeah. it's like you need five lasers to keep up with one sixty forty two when you're just printing a nice low density white and get a beautiful look. Yeah. Yeah, I've had people, uh, especially in the name badge industry, they have the name badge 
and they uh, they they want to cut their own name badges for the laser. Well, you're going to have to have four or five lasers to cut enough name badges to feed one UV printer. Um, so that's something that, in that case, you want to partner with somebody who already makes the lasers. They they cut them. I mean, they they cut the name badges for you, so you can just buy the blank name badges and and print on them. You're going to be much faster just buying blanks and printing on them than you are trying to cut them and print on them. You can do both, but if you get into serious numbers, your your la one laser is not going to keep up with the UV printer as production wise. I would imagine even the smallest of towns has a trophy shop with a laser. You know, yeah. Finding somebody to do laser work for you, even if you're in the smallest of towns, probably isn't that difficult. There's probably a laser within 30 miles and just about everybody looking at this, I would imagine. So uh, we got a, a couple of comments here. Carl King, he's one of our super loyal workhorses. Uh I mean he's a he's a go-getter for sure. He started out with the lasers. Now his comments says I have started everything you need now, other than cutting that my laser can do. So he's cutting out products for his UV printer. So he's not actually making many products on his laser because the UV printed products are more, you know, more marginal. Just because there's not as many competitors, you know, uh, that have the UV printing. Uh, myself, Jeff and Candles. Hey man, we're we're ready for you when you do move that way. Uh, all right, guys, y'all keep them questions coming. Did Tom have that? Okay. Uh, all right, let's check another. Let me check Instagram. See what they got going. I think a big thing I see, you know, going back on smaller companies trying to be successful with this is is we talk about it a lot. It's key. Do not do everything for everybody. Yeah. It, it's don't tie your machine up running it eight hours a day to do 10% margin on a product, right? Like those may not be the customer. You're running all day long to make $500. Yeah, you're, you're, you're making the payments, you're making money, but you can't scale at that point, right? So it, it's tougher for you to go out and get more sales. You may get a great opportunity to come in and you can't really jump on because your machine's already in max capacity, yeah. right? So be willing to really narrow your focus on the high margin. That's the biggest thing. Point out the biggest yeah. high margin. Our our customers that are doing the best, they're really good at two or three products. Yep. They've they've specialized in something, whether it's military related products, whether it's the pet industry, puppies, cats, backyard chickens, whatever. But they focus on that industry, okay? Same thing with the sports teams. Well, when you get into sports teams, you're doing all high schools, then you then you go into the small colleges, and before you know it, you're licensed to do all the sports products. Uh, but that's all this company does is sports-related products. That's the industry they decided they want to be a part of. So when you get your printer first, you're going to do everything for everybody for a short time. Then you're going to look at your accounting software, and you're going to say, Here's my cost of goods. Here's what I sold it for. That's a ton of margin. Let's keep doing that. Let's quit doing this margin, which is 40 or 50 percent for most people, when we can make, you know, two or three thousand percent margin. If you don't look for that kind of margin, you'll just walk right past it. But if you pay attention to your accounting software and really look at what it cost me, what I could sell it for, and how widespread the need is for it, that's why. Uh, name badges are great. Never going out of style. They're going to be here as long as there's people working in hotels and restaurants and all kind of industries. Uh, not only the name badges, the, the, the key cards. You know, everybody's got key cards to get into the different facilities. These machines print on that stuff too. And every big corporate office now, they're doing the key cards. But you can custom print them. You can custom print the hotel cards that are specific for certain events. There's a there's a lot of stuff out there, guys, that you know we want you guys to go after and you know enjoy going after it. And make make a bunch of their money. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else we got. All right, uh, Chris Dixon, that's a great question. Uh, 
Uh, I'm going to get Doug for this. What's up, Chris? Uh, can you talk about the different ink sets and what's best applications? What is the best way to test long-term durability? That's a the thing about ink that that can make it a, a tougher question to answer is it's all about what is the ink going on. It's you know there's there's not a magic bullet when it comes to this ink. You know probably the most general purpose ink we sell is probably a US one twenty. That's probably the most general purpose ink. Um, as far as testing goes, um, I'm looking for. It, it really depends the application. You got to answer a few questions. Is it going outside? What's it going to be used for? Is it going to be home decor? Is it going to be an industrial product? So there's there's several questions. There's a couple of boxes you have to check there. Um, you know, but general purpose ink 120. So one thing I always tell people about ink, okay, is that if you're Flexible ink is flexible because it's more porous, right? It's more porous. So since the flexible ink is more porous, it has a lower water chemical resistance, okay? And since it's more porous, it's more rubbery, it's going to be more tacky. But inks like LH100, even though they're, they're not as flexible, they're not near as porous. So you have a much higher water and chemical resistance. So as far as testing goes, of course, adhesion. Of course, adhesion, and then look at what your the product's going to be used for. Is that product in a in a high abrasion environment? Is it, is it going to be in somebody's pocket? If it's going to be in somebody's pocket, then you know abrasion testing, right? You know, so first I'm looking at what's it going to be used for, and what is it going on. Once I know that, that determines what kind of testing I want to do. If it's going outside. If it's going outside, that's a different thing than hanging on the wall inside, right? What do you, what do you think? I mean, yeah, you know, the, a, a knife, a knife handle. Right. You're gonna put somebody's name on the side of a knife handle uh, that goes in their pocket every day. It's a lot different than uh, a sign that's gonna go on the wall that says the base thing. Wow. Yeah. So, answer those questions, and and then you will eventually. The more less times you answer those questions, and you say you have your ink. You, and you've done a bunch of abrasion testing. After a while of doing a lot of different products, you start realizing good answers to give your customers. Right. You know, just two years outdoor on a, on a metal sign is a, is a pretty accurate thing that I, I would say. I, you know, I feel safe. Non laminated, non -laminated right. on a on a good UV coated aluminum. You know, the stuff we print. Two years is pretty safe to say. Uh, but you got to protect yourself too, like on these cups right like they stick phenomenally and i can put them in the dishwasher and and i wash them 50 times and it, it don't even phase them but that still don't mean that i'm not going to put a hand wash only yeah. in the cup because yeah. if somebody comes back after you know six months it's kicked it around the parking lot with the gravel you know and the, and the ink comes off you know it's it's it, it's all about Making sure the expectations are set for the customer as well. Yeah, yeah and it's we get that question a lot: is uh, how long is this print going to last outside? Okay. Well, and I I use the same y'all. I'm sure a lot of y'all already heard this. Uh, you know, we I compare it to paint on a car. If you buy a brand new Corvette and you go park it in the Walmart parking lot for around six months, and you go back and look at it. It's not going to be as bright red as it was when you parked it. Okay. It's going to have a little oxidation on it. You're going to need to wash and wax that car to get it back to looking great. So when people have printed signs, they want it to last for multiple years and not change color. That's not really fair because it's out elements just like that car is. And not many people go out and wash and wax their sign. Yeah, wash and wax all signs. Yeah, they don't do that. So to expect the sign to last longer than a car that was painted with a $40 million robot is not realistic. Uh, so, you know, the sign industry, it's kind of like car wraps. If you wash it and take care of it, it's going to last a long time. But if you uh, if it just sets out there in the sun and bakes, you know, a couple couple years from now, it's not going to be as bright. It's still going to be there. It's just not going to be as bright. And I think we're all pretty agreed that the flexible inks, are better for outdoor applications. Um, the coroplast changes size every day. 
Okay, this morning in Nashville it was 20 degrees. Well, that, that sign's shrinking up at 20 degrees. When the sun comes out and it gets to 60 degrees, that sign's going to expand a little bit. Well, flexible ink's great for expanding frogs and prime. And prime. It's not going to be, the, the hard ink is not going to last as long because the product's you know, restricting and growing with the temperature and the sunshine. Uh, so outdoor application, flexible ink's the best. You got 150 and then you got 120. That's our two options for flexible ink. Um, you guys remember our sign on the side of the building? Yes. So, you know, when we when we had a problem with that and we called the guys down the street that done the sign, it wasn't actually the ink. It was the coating on the sign that was messing up. Well, yeah. So he, he was telling us, he was like, you know, he said, this lamination is just as much about as protecting the material we printed it on yeah. as it is protecting the image. Yes. You know, so that lamination does more than just protect the image in outdoor applications, yeah. right? And if you're doing core class signs, that's not a long term problem. Okay. That's a temporary, that's a good for an event or two, but it's not going to go up on the the little league fence in the last three years for core class. So if you're looking for a long-term outdoor solution, you need a you know a good outdoor blank. Um, see, Chris got another question. An example, an acrylic keychain, how many layers and composed of primary and clear? The 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 less layers you can put on a material, the better your adhesion is going to be. Okay, because UV ink is sitting on top of the product. It's not down into it like a sublimation. So if you got a flat product and your print is sticking way up off the product, you can fill a little edge there. Well, that edge is where it's going to start chipping as they put the keychain in their pocket or whatever. So I'm going to use the less amount of ink possible and the less amount of steps possible to still achieve my color. If I can use 30% white and my color still looks good, I'm going to do 30% white. If it's not dark enough color, I'll bump it up. Uh, but I would rather not have to use primer on anything if I can help it, just because primer doubles your production time. So if you can do a wipe on primer, you're gonna be much faster than you would be with a, uh, a gelable primer. But sometimes gelable primer is the way to go because it doesn't leave any haze or anything in the non-image areas. It only puts the primer exactly where you need it. I like the primer also because that that primer, if you ever, if, for the people who have a machine, if you'll print that primer layer by itself, to sacrifice a piece of acrylic and print 100% primer, and after it's cured, see what it feels like. You've got this tacky gun layer in between your product and your ink, right? So in, in my mind, you've got this expansion joint in between your substrate and the ink. So, you know, like Steve talking about on the outdoor stuff. Well, if you got a sign, that's at like 20 degrees in Nashville this morning, the sun hits it and it goes up to 40. Well, if you've got a if you've got an expansion layer in between your your metal sign and the ink, that could be a benefit. So that's another way that I kind of look at primer. It's just an expansion joint between the two, especially with hard inks. Yeah, yeah. Especially with hard inks. You know, you're probably going to use more primer with the hard inks than you are flexible inks, most likely. Especially on hard substrate, would you say? Yeah. 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 So uh, we're going to give y'all guys a couple more minutes, see if y'all got any questions. And uh, we're going to talk about Energize. Energize, uh, September 3rd through the 5th, Nashville, Tennessee. I should have the registration link for the hotel in the event next week. Uh, we are going to charge this year. Okay. So this is something you guys ask us to do. And the reason is we have limited spots available for this event, okay? We've only, you know, we can fit 400 people safely in the building. Well, last year we had 35 to 40 people that registered and took a spot that didn't show up. Well, that eliminated 30 or 40 other people that wanted to attend, but they couldn't come because it was at capacity. So this year we're charging $25 per person to get into UB Energize. That's just to make sure that whoever registered is serious about coming and they don't take a spot from somebody else and not show up. If you register and something happens before the event, you can't come, it's we'll refund your money, but we need to, you know, we need to know a couple weeks ahead of time that you're not coming so we can make room for other people. 
Uh, we're going to have a couple more exhibitors this year. We're going to have equipment out in the hallway uh, just so we can spread everything out a little bit to give each person more time to ask questions that they want to ask. Uh, base camp's going to continue on the same. Or? Uh, yeah, we're going to have the base camp still going to be Tuesday. That's going to help the people, uh, you know, the people who aren't new or that are new to UV printing to come in and get up to speed uh, so they can understand what, what to expect. Like, with the, like people with the laser, people with nothing. So yeah, that. we're going to, the, the sessions are going to have more detailed information before the event. So you know exactly what the instructors are going over. Last year, it was kind of a general, a general purpose stuff, but some people went to one class and they wish they would have went to the other class. So uh, you don't know, space them out time enough them at the same time. But, uh, no, there'll be a lot of classes at the same time. Just because we only got so much, you know, so many days. We only got so many days to, to get it all. Well, that was our first year down there. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it worked out. I mean, there's there a lot of a uh, lot of good stuff. I think doing definitely we swing back around later in the year. Do a live like this and really sit down and ask people. What do they want? Yeah, what what do you want? You know, we're here. What are you looking for? Well, we'll we'll do any class. We've got 17, 18 guys running right. around here in August. We're good at something. Yeah, yeah but among those three classes, we could find good spits and split some of those topics up. And among those three, classes. I mean, we got nine months, guys, to figure it out. So uh, any anything y'all need at Energize, let us know so we can plan ahead of time and start getting it. We got some, you know, we're going to have more guest speakers. We're going to have seminars. We're going to have you guys more involved in the speaking sessions. Uh, I've already got a couple people that are interested in speaking that are going through the same stuff. I want people who've been in the business for a long time doing the speaking. I want people who just got the machine and see how, how they, how it's going. You know, what, what was surprising? What did you wish you would have did different? Um, but anyway, we're fixing to have to get back to work. We got to go sell some equipment. Uh, if y'all got any questions, you can still post them on here. We're going to post this back, the recorded version for everybody who couldn't make it. I know it's an hour of time and you guys got to work and make money. Um, so I appreciate you guys joining us. Appreciate the trip. Appreciate Doug. Uh, fun. Well, we're going to try to do it next week. And, uh, well, not next week, but in a couple of weeks. We're going to be, hey, we're going to be in Dallas next week, uh, calling a bunch of customers. So if you guys are in Dallas looking for support and service, uh, can you hit me with one of those topics? All right. I don't know if y'all can see this. Okay. It says the new new service in town. Yeah. Cool stuff. So, uh, you know, we're a service company. And we know that area's been struggling with service for a while. So we're bringing our service team to town to uh, show you guys how how the service comes supposed to do it. But uh, appreciate you guys. We'll see y'all next you. week. And uh, go get it. Yeah, thank you. That was fun. Yeah, that was cool. Back to don't get it in the mouth. <laughs> well, I mean, I just didn't talk about that stuff. I yeah, that's that. what's cool about it. We just, we just keep it rolling. We get bad, but I got to see. I think definitely more like talking to each other. Yeah. You know, like when you're talking, talking to each other. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's That's real. That's real. Yeah. And that's what, it, you know, it's Q&A, but we're not, because they might never ask a question. Yeah. Uh, it should have cut off. But it's, uh, I'll get a boot mic. Um, so we can hear all three of you. You are definitely louder than the other guys. The other option is what they working. All the audio is coming from my phone. Just because, you know, this video ain't gonna be worth the crap. That's the better video. Yeah. On um, this, I couldn't, I couldn't zoom out on this, and of course that all happened. We'll, we'll, we'll figure all that out yeah. next time.
What we probably ought to do is run through the board because then each of you can have your own mic. It's much easier to hear. Yeah, yeah, y'all are live. So if y'all want to hear what we're talking about on YouTube, yeah, we're live. Hey, we're trying to help you guys, man. <laughs> we're trying to help you. Maybe we'll be less worse. Maybe shoot deer this weekend or something. I don't know. Does that put that? 